Hello everyone! In this video I will show you how to perform a PCA by using the CAT software. Let's start off by using the 2Whisky dataset. Just to remind it, you can find it into the working directory inside the CAT folder inside your local disk. I have it already opened. As you can see, we have 43 samples. The first row is the header, while the first column is the sample name, the second column is telling the type of whiskey, in this case we have two types, A and B, and here we have the variables. Chemically speaking, we have 12 chemical components from a ZC analysis. Now, next step, let's import this dataset into CAT. I'll use the copy and paste option very quite quickly. Let's give it a name TW, corresponding to two whiskeys. Anyway, if you don't remember this procedure, I, I suggest you to watch the video in the description below. And here we have TW created 43 rows, 43 samples, described by 12 variables. The first one is the categorical variable. Now, in order to get the best out of this dataset, let's go to the PCA menu to do the PCA. We go here, we have the drop-down menu, and we go to Model Computation, and we click on PCA. Here we have the dialog box. We need to uh, fill all the fields, matrix name TW, which stands for two whiskeys. By default, we have all rows and all columns. In this case, we just want to consider the numerical variables, so we type in two, column, and we can use and or 13, meaning that uh, until the, uh, the last column. Here, the number of components, just a stop criterion for the Nepal's uh, algorithm. 5 is fine, but we can we can use 10. Here by default we have both centered and scaled. This is the pretreatment. Together makes the auto scaling. We can select whether we want to uh, to apply centering and or scaling. Anyway, for other pretreatments you should go to over transformations menu where you can find more transformations. In this case, autoscaling is fine since we are dealing with uh, different variables with different scales and different nature. So we can go on. And here we have done our PCA. And we can see by looking at the console where we have the, var the variance explained by each component. In this case, 10, since we have computed 10 components. Now it's possible to look at all the plots into the PCA menu. First of all, let's look at the scree plot. Go to plot, variance, scree plot. And here we are looking at these percentages in a plot. It is quite important because it tells us how many significant components we have. In this case, two, according to the broken stick rule. Then we have other interesting plots. Uh, always inside the variance uh, uh, submenu, the cumulative, and according to the significant component, the variance of each variable explained. Here you have to select two, and you can see the variance explained by each variable. Let's minimize all the plots, and let's look at the loading plot important to interpret the correlation structure within the data. We can produce the loadings in several ways, as scatter, or line, or bar. The line plot is useful for continuous variables, for instance, wavelengths of spectra. Here, in this case, the best way to produce the loadings is uh, through the scatter plot. Here, we, we have the dialog box, where we have to input which component we want to analyze, in this case 1 and 2, x versus y axis. 
and also we can color our variable according to a specific color but we need to import uh, a row vector with as many code as color we want to produce if we leave the box column names unchecked we will get the variables coded by a number following the datasets order on the contrary checking variable name uh, the header will be displayed, the original one that we have imported previously. If we go on without checking it and selecting arrows, we will get this loading plot where we have arrows used to interpret the correlation structure. Now let's do this plot again by using the column names. Go to PCA, plot, loadings scatter scatter again and we check column names without arrows and here we get the typical loading plot at this point let's carry on with the scope plot important to look at the samples displayed into the component space we go to plot scores two dimension score plot here we have the two components on x and y axis and if we don't add any additional information we will get these plots over here note this is important if we want to edit the plot created we must select a name and click ok otherwise cancel and then we can further edit using the plot editing menu here we have our samples, but to add some information to our plot, let's go back to the PCA menu, scores. We can add the row names and also we can color our sample according to the column vector, the first column of our dataset, the categorical one, telling the type of whiskey. To do so, we must use the R syntax. Here, we, we have to call the categorical vector by typing the matrix name, in this case 2W, followed by the square brackets. Inside the squared, we have rows and columns separated by a comma. Anyway, there is an example for each voice. Without specifying the rows before the comma, we are selecting all the rows within the first column. Let's click cancel here and here we have our plot. Going back to the scores dialog box, so we can add also the convex cell. We use the same syntax and we click OK and here the difference. Also we can print a line, but I suggest you uh, to not use the convex cell vector option. To do so, you go back typing in none with N capital. And here we have a line connecting each point following the chronological order of your dataset. Going back to the same score plot menu, you can add also the ellipses telling the t squared statistics according to a different level of significance. Let's have a look at it. You have the different level of significance. Anyway, here we are dealing with two families. So not the point of using it right now. Here we can also do the by plot. In this case uh, we want to have the column names and the row names as well and here we have the by plot in which we have both scores and loadings. Anyway it is a little bit overcrowded. Finally if you want to save this plot you can right click and copy it as metafile or as bitmap. This is the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe.